Hey, this is Mike from the One Stop Co-op Shop, here with another Kickstarter review. Today we're looking at Final Girl from Van Ryder Games, one that if you listen to my coverage of PAX U, you already know I really, really enjoyed. Quick disclaimer that while I received no compensation for this review, Van Ryder Games did publish our first game design, Salvation Rose, so we do have some history there. Final Girl is a solo-only game based on the old hostage negotiator system that models a horror movie, specifically a slasher, where one female protagonist fights against the masked villain. I absolutely adored this game when I played it with Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire at PAX. But did it still shine as brightly when I got to sit down with a demo of it for several days? Let's find out and talk about it. I have to start by saying I absolutely love this game. Let's get into some of the main reasons why. First, and probably most importantly for me, a big horror and slasher fan, this feels like a movie brought to life. It is so cinematic and tense and suspenseful. The events that can happen in a game, like a tree coming in the window to attack your characters, or your boyfriend showing up unexpectedly, feel like they're ripped straight from the movies in a really fun, mechanical way. But with that excellent theme, you also have some great game design going on. The designers took the core of Hostage Negotiator and, in my opinion, improved it. For one thing, the tactile nature of having a board for the game and seeing the victims in one spot and the killers stalking toward them really adds to the tension and theme and feeling of the game. But I think they also made a great choice with the luck and mitigation from Hostage Negotiator. Now instead of one side of the dice you use to resolve your cards having a two card symbol, two sides have that. And that means you have to discard cards to ensure you're successful in your action. So it gives you greater choices and strategy as you play the game and also makes the luck factor just a little bit lower, which I appreciate. Another awesome thing that I really love in game design lately is the modular nature of the game. In a page pulled straight from Sentinels of the Multiverse or a Saddler Brothers game or Cthulhu Death May Die, you can take any killer and pair it with any location and use any final girl in this awesome mishmash of cards and characters and excitement. But even within a given set, you only use two of a killer's six key cards in a game. You only see a fraction of the events, a fraction of the items, so even playing the same combo will still feel fresh each time, at least in my experience. Now, all those positives being said, there are some elements which might not make the game work for you. First, while the theme and artwork don't dive into the full sexuality and brutality of the slasher genre, they still allude to major elements of it, so if you really don't like horror movies, you might not dig this one. Second, while they have increased mitigation and lowered the luck somewhat, this is still potentially a swingy and luck-driven game. I think that adds a lot to the cinematic feel to it, but if you hate randomness and dice luck, this still might bother you. And a final note, while I do think each set can stand alone and be a lot of fun with good variety, the game is going to have its most fun and its best value when you do mix and match, so I suggest buying two or three or even all four sets for the highest replayability and fun factor. Overall, Final Girl is one of my favorite things I've played this year, just like it was one of my favorite things from the end of last year. The tension, the fun, the variety, the tough choices, all in a tiny playing space and a quick playing time really make it excellent. It physically hurt me to send my prototype on to Liz, and man oh man, this is a game I cannot wait to play the full production copy of. Good gaming, and we'll see you at the next stop.